In this video, I'm going to talk about the Goldenberg Etude. It's the primary etude under option two. Now, most of you probably have the older version of this book with the blue cover by Goldenberg, and the pages referenced on your audition material sheet references this blue book. So it says it's Roman numeral 15, and it's on page 73. This is not the book that I'm using when I work on this etude with my students. I prefer to work out of an updated version primarily for the sticking. My book looks like this. It's edited by Jim Surrey, Ben Hans, and Tom Schneller, and it has a much better option for stickings, I think. Mine is not called Roman numeral 15, it just says Etude in A flat major, and it's on a different page. But I, if, I would recommend picking up this book if you get a chance, especially if you're a freshman and you're going to be working for the next four years on these Allstate Etudes, this book will definitely come in handy. I think I've used almost all of the sticking suggestions in this book versus some of the sticking options in the older book. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is rolling. There's a lot of rolls in this etude, and there is no slur indication after the rolls. So, our first question is, to tie or not to tie? I think I've played through this etude several times now, and I've picked out maybe five or six options where I'm not going to tie, meaning I'm not going to slur that roll into the next downbeat but I'm just going to end the phrase and make a little bit of a breath mark. All the rest of them, I'm gonna tie and slur into the next note. So let me just give you the ones I'm not going to tie because it's a smaller number. I would highly recommend, even right now, stopping the video and writing in your measure numbers because from here on out, I'm gonna reference measure numbers and you might wanna be able to see these fairly quickly. So the first roll that I'm not going to tie is actually in measure four on beat four. It's an E flat and it really clearly ends the first phrase. It's kind of awkward to tie the low E flat all the way up to the high E flat. So let me tell you um, and show you kind of what I'm going to do here. You can see that I left just a little bit of a breath between the low E flat and the high E flat. My next one will be measure 10, the very last beat, and it is the higher E flat, and I'm not going to tie it to the next high C. I feel like that's a good ending to the phrase right there. Here's my example. So I leave just a little bit of a break before that next measure. My next one is measure 14. There's a dotted quarter note that I'm going to put a little breath after for the same reasons. And also there's one in measure 16, a dotted quarter note. The final one is in measure 28. This one might be a little bit more controversial with you and your teacher. Feel free to discuss it. But I'm going to leave a little bit of breath mark after the A flat. Again, I just feel like it's a better phrase ending. You'll notice one of the things that I'm going to do when I have these phrase endings that do not tie to the next beat is just give a simple decrescendo to the note. You certainly don't want to give a stinger on the end of your roll. This is not a snare drum. You need to show off your musical maturity by really ending the phrase like you're a vocalist or a wind player. Let me show you an example of what not to do. This is measure four. We don't want a big stinger at the end or at the beginning. So rather, on that low E flat, you just put a slight diminuendo like this. Not a huge break, just a slight diminuendo with a little bit of a breath mark. All of the other notes that are rolled, I am going to tie or slur into the next note. Again, not with an accent, but just I'm going to continue that sound so that it goes right into the next note. Let's just look at the first measure so I can explain this concept of slurring. The first measure, the G will connect into the A flat and the B flat will connect into the C. Just a connection. What you don't want are big breaths on every roll. This is what you don't want. 
not there, you want them to kind of slur into each other. Even though there's no indication, that's kind of what you're going to want to do. When you roll on the upper manual, you want to try and avoid the string. It's the worst spot on the bar to play. So I usually put one of my hands just off center of the resonator and one of my hands on the edge. So it sounds and looks like this. If you end up playing right on the string, it sounds like this. It's actually quite hard to do and it has a much thinner sound. I would hesitate to have you go both hands in the center just because one of them probably usually will wander down over that string. So I highly recommend that you split the beating spot on the upper manual. It doesn't matter if you have right over left or left over right. You'll probably do both of them in context, but I just recommend that you split that beating spot when you're rolling on the upper manual. You don't want your roll speed to be too fast. A really fast roll speed tends to be really intense and aggressive. And this is just a nice simple etude. Sometimes that fast roll speed is equivalent to the bow pressure on a violin or the air pressure in a wind instrument. And I think you want to consider that kind of medium right now for us. Not a lot of pressure on the bow or through the horn. I always get questions about where to hit on the bar, on the edge or the center when it comes to the upper manual. Sometimes people also ask me questions when you're rolling, do you do right over left all the time or do you try and do them both in the center? Really, it is all based on context. You just need to play through this several times so you figure out what gets comfortable. I don't always do anything. I will play on the edge, I will play in the center, I will cover all of those options, but it really is just based on the context, something you're probably gonna have to find out for yourself in the practice room. One thing to note, there is not a dynamic on the page, not even a forte. I would probably say a mezzo forte to a forte is a good range to go through. I wouldn't get super soft, nor would I get super loud. You really want to think of the dynamics on this page more in reference to phrasing. Two phrasing concepts that are pretty generic that you can apply to this etude. When you move up the keyboard, slight crescendo. When you move down the keyboard or down in pitch, slight decrescendo. It's not necessarily always the case, but it certainly can be applied as something to start with. I would have you think about reading a story or even just when you talk, your voice has inflection that goes up and it goes down no matter what you're saying. None of us talk on this monotone level where we never do anything with our voice. That's very boring. And if you just play the notes and don't offer any inflection up or down, it gets very boring. So think of each one of these as kind of like you're reading a story, a couple paragraphs maybe. You want to add inflection both up and down, and a lot of this is really just determined by you. You can listen to what I did in my etude, but you don't have to do the exact same thing. That was just my suggestion of how I thought it would sound nice. What I would do is play through it several times, come up with some ideas on your own, maybe run them by a teacher, maybe even not necessarily a percussionist. Any musician should be able to offer some comments on phrasing. What The only way to do it wrong is to do nothing. Make sure you add some inflection to this etude. My last comment is in regards to tempo. It's at 88. You are going to want to rush. Most of you will absolutely be able to play this faster than 88, but show off your musical maturity and keep it steady. You really don't want the tempo to increase nor decrease, but keeping it at 88 is actually quite difficult. I practice with the metronome quite often as I would highly recommend. Let me just give one other piece of advice. Once you do pick a sticking, whether you pick the one out of the new book or the old book, stick with it every time. Read through the etude three or four times to get comfortable with it. By, by that fifth time, you have a pencil in your hand and you are starting to write in the exact sticking you wanna do every single time. I should be able to point anywhere on the page and have you start there and you would start with that exact sticking every single time. That'll really just help when you get nervous when you're doing the audition.